A lot of great moments in wrestling history have been built on the backs of great factions. After all, who could ever forget the NWO's hostile takeover of WCW, the Four Horsemen's savage attacks on Dusty Rhodes, or D-Generation X and the Nation of Domination's wars during the late 90s? And this is a tradition which is carried over to the modern day too, because currently there are a wealth of great groups across a variety of different promotions. But which of these stables are the best of them all? Well, that's exactly what we're going to be looking at today, so join us as we take a deep dive into Gang Mentality, Wrestling's Greatest Modern Factions. Of course, if we're going to start anywhere, we really should do so with arguably the biggest and most successful faction of the current day, and that's the Bloodline. Yes, not since the days of the early 2000s has WWE seen a storyline work as successfully as this, and the reason for that is all down to the people involved. Of course, on top you have the head of the table himself, Roman Reigns, someone who after coming back to WWE following a sabbatical in early 2020 decided he needed to take control of his career again. How would he do this? Well, by morphing into a megalomaniacal mob boss, one who bullied his way through every situation and who never went anywhere without his wise man Paul Heyman by his side. And over time, their ranks would also grow to include Reigns' cousins the Usos too, even if it may have taken the Universal Champion a while to convince the star tag team such an idea was in their best interests. Once he did this though, they eventually bent the knee and acknowledged their tribal chief. And needless to say, this only increased the group's power, as with the Usos being probably the best tag team in WWE, their bases were now covered in each division. But even that wasn't enough for the bloodline. No, after Roman unified the WWE and Universal titles, and Jimmy and Jay won both the Raw and SmackDown tag team straps, the elders of the Anawaii family sent a new recruit in the form of Solo Sokoa to learn from them firsthand. And with him from there acting as the silent heavy, it completed the act. That was until an unlikely new honorary oos came along, of course. That's right, in the autumn of 2022, Sami Zayn began ingratiating himself into the faction, with this ultimately being what took the whole thing from great to legendary. During his time with the Bloodline, in fact, it became the hottest stable in the entire industry, one which actually got Raw and SmackDown to gain some viewers for the first time in years. That said, in recent months, Sami's time with the heel group has come to an end, and he, alongside Kevin Owens, have since dethroned the Usos as tag team champions at WrestleMania 39. However, with Roman defeating Cody Rhodes in the main event of Night 2, the Bloodline is going to go down as not just one of the best factions of the modern day, but one of the best of all time. But they are not the only current stable in wrestling who can hold a claim to being among the all-time greats, because over in All Elite Wrestling, another powerhouse group which houses a former member of The Shield is making Jacksonville their own personal playground. Who are we talking about here? Why, the Blackpool Combat Club, of course. That's right, after getting into a feud in early 2022, Jon Moxley and Brian Danielson decided the best thing for each of them to do would be to join forces and create a union no one else in AEW could compete with. And as it happened, right there in their corner while they did this would be a man who'd served as a mentor to both, the OG villain himself, William Regal. But with the trio now established, they still needed to come up with a name for themselves, one which would announce their intentions to the world. And that was how, in honor of the English town where Regal first cut his teeth as a wrestler, they'd soon begin referring to themselves as the Blackpool Combat Club. That said, this wasn't just about Moxley and Danielson taking over AEW. No, it was about bringing the younger generation up to their level. So when Wheeler Yuta, then a member of the Best Friends, decided he wanted to sit under the learning tree of the BCC, he'd eventually be brought along for the ride too. Sure, he'd have to prove himself in some pretty bloody bouts with the Death Rider first, but once he did this, it was all go for the now four-man faction. Something which was just as well because at that point, with Mox's friend Eddie Kingston and his partner Santana and Ortiz by their side, the BCC got into a program with another group we'll get to in a moment, one which gave us an all-time great match in Anarchy in the Arena at Double or Nothing 2022. Sadly though, soon after that bout was over, a concussion would see Brian Danielson be briefly placed on the shelf. And with his spot needing to be filled for the upcoming Blood and Guts then, a new recruit was brought on board in the form of Claudio Castagnoli. But this turned out to be a blessing in the end then, because with the former Cesaro now there full-time, the Blackpool Combat Club became truly unstoppable. 
Hell, after their founder and namesake William Regal left the group in early 2023, they continued to dominate, though now as a far more heelish faction. What of the group they feuded with throughout the summer of 2022, though? Well, while they've found plenty of success themselves, they're less focused on the whole and more on a hero worship of one individual, as can be seen clearly in their name, the Jericho Appreciation Society. But this one would have never come about at all had it not been for a tragic breakup because in early 2022, Chris Jericho cemented a new heel turn by laying out his The Inner Circle stablemates. Well, sort of, because by that point, Sammy Guevara had already left the other four members to it as he'd chosen to instead focus on his TNT title reign. And with Jericho and Jake Hager no longer able to coexist with Santana and Ortiz, it meant things quickly blew up and the inner circle would be dead. Out of the ashes of this, however, came the Demo God's newest creation, the Jericho Appreciation Society, a group which included not only him and Hager, but also Daniel Garcia, Cool Hand Angelo Parker, and Daddy Magic Matt Menard. And as the name suggested, this one was all about feeding Le Champion's ego. But it wasn't only about that, because now seeing pro wrestling as being secondary to Vince McMahon's way of doing things, Jericho and co. became the biggest heels in AEW when they started labeling themselves as sports entertainers. So this meant the fans regularly jeered them everywhere they went, all after they were done singing along to Judas, of course. And the boos only got louder when Sammy Guevara and his by then shoot wife Ty Mello joined the group a few months later, bringing their douchebag influencer gimmicks along with them. But even that wasn't the end of the recruitment drive as following this, Anna J, real life best friend of Ty Mello, ditched the Dark Order and joined up with the group too. And with her now there to help Mello dominate the women's division, it seems there's no end to what the Jericho Appreciation Society will be able to achieve in the future. That said, if we're looking at current stables which feature dominating female presences, there's another which arguably overshadows this one. After all, while TJ are strong as a duo, even together they may not be able to overcome the might of Rhea Ripley and her crew, The Judgment Day. Sure, this one may have started off a little weak when, in the spring of 2022, Edge brought both The Nightmare and Damian Priest under his wing. But that was largely because of no one really wanting to boo the rated R superstar at this point. So when he was booted from the faction and replaced with Finn Balor soon thereafter, it all finally started working, as the trio became the scourge of Raw over the next few months. And a big part of the reason they were able to do this was because, while Balor was on the surface of things the leader, to anyone who was paying attention, it was Ripley who was calling all the shots. Hell, it was her who seemed to take a particular shine to Dominic Mysterio over the course of that summer and subsequently push for him to be recruited into the stable. Needless to say then, what mommy wants, mommy gets. And that was why, at Clash at the Castle in September of 2022, Dom Dom finally joined forces with the Judgment Day and from there took the whole act to another level altogether. Still though, if Rhea in particular wants to make the women's division her own, she's eventually going to have to contend with one of the rare women's factions in the industry today, and that's the trio of Bayley, Io Sky, and Dakota Kai, Damage Control. Outside of the baddies in AEW, it really is hard to think of another modern day stable in western wrestling featuring only women. So it's just as well that this one is paving the way for others by being a dominating force, as since their inception in the summer of 2022, the group have been able to win the women's tag team titles on two separate occasions. And yes, these belts have been held each time by Sky and Kai, but that shouldn't suggest the role model wasn't a key part of what got them into this position. No, like any good trio, they work together even when they're technically not all part of the match. But then what else would we expect from such experienced performers? After all, with Bayley being a four-time world champion, Dakota Kai being a 16-year veteran, and Io Sky being arguably the greatest women's wrestler alive, there's no reason they shouldn't be experts at this. That said, for as much as they've mowed through everyone in their path, the trio still have some things left to prove. And this was exactly why, looking to fully cement their spot in history at WrestleMania 39, they took on three of the biggest legends in women's wrestling, Trish Stratus, Lita, and Becky Lynch. And now that that's done, who knows what'll come next? Maybe Bayley will decide she wants to be a world champion again, and the group will be able to hold all the gold available to them in WWE. 
Hell, maybe they'll even decide New York isn't enough and they'll start going after titles in other promotions too. In 2023, anything is possible, so we can't say for sure this won't happen. We can't even say for sure another group won't come up from NXT and steal their thunder before they even have a chance to do this. What group are we talking about here? Why, Schism, of course. And yes, we know that most of Schism are made up of men, but there is a woman amongst the ranks too, one who could very well end up making that division her own before long if she wants. How can this be the case? Well, because she's none other than Ava Rain, someone with a pedigree unlike anyone else since Charlotte Flair, as she's not only a member of the NOIE family, but she's also the daughter of The Rock. So needless to say, her recruitment was a major coup for the heel group then, though it wasn't as if they were struggling without her. No, before Rain even came on board, they were already riding high on 2.0 with Joe Gacy acting as the leader and Rip Fowler and Jagger Reed serving as his underlings. And with the former grizzled young veterans able to play the role of workhorses in the ring, it meant Gacy was freed up to sell his cult leader-like figure to fans on the mic as he made them all believe the schism were the future of not only the brand, but of the larger industry too. But will his prophecy come to pass? Well, that remains to be seen, as still being on NXT, the stable remains in its infancy. That said, based on the success prior groups like the Undisputed Era were able to have on the black and gold brand, we wouldn't be surprised if, before long, Gacy has been able to take the NXT world title, all while the Dyad and Ava Rain do the same with the tag team and women's titles respectively. And if they are able to carry out such an act, surely their next step will be to move things up to the main roster and continue on from there. After all, by that point, it's likely the bloodline angle will be over, and so SmackDown will need something new injected into it. But the schism won't necessarily be the next great stable which finds itself making its way up from NXT to the main roster. No, Hot on Their Heels is another popular foursome from the 2.0 era of the developmental brand, one which wants to make their own mark just as badly, and that's Chase U. Yes, NXT 2.0 has often been criticized for getting a bit WWF in 1995 at times with its silly gimmicks. That said, while there's certainly some legitimacy to this claim, it doesn't always mean what's been created there has been bad. No, even in 1995 we got some gold in the form of Waylon Mercy, and 2.0 in the present day has been no different, as with Andre Chase serving as the best delusional heel teacher WWE has seen since the days of Matt Stryker, he's been able to get over with fans down in Florida. But it's not like he's done it alone though, because with his educational syllabus being more focused on headlocks and hip tosses than hitting the textbooks, he's been able to sign up some students in the form of Dia Hall, Duke Hudson, and more recently, former United Kingdom champion Tyler Bate. What could someone like Bate possibly have to learn from Chase University? Well, a lot as it happens, because since joining forces with them, he's felt the most relevant he's been in years, someone who could even be a player on the main roster soon. Before he and the rest of his stablemates get there though, they'll still have business to take care of on the developmental brand, business which includes winning the NXT tag titles from current champions Gallus. And while they haven't been able to do this yet, that's not to say they won't in the future. And that's also not to say that Chase and Hall won't win gold of their own before their time in the brand is done too. After all, the NXT World title and NXT Women's title would both look good in the trophy cabinet at Chase U. And of course, once that's done, like with their rivals in the schism, Andre Chase and his students will no doubt have their sights set on reaching the top of the mountain on the main roster. But if they want to do this, then they're going to have to contend with some tough competition because the last NXT stable who moved up to SmackDown are still dominating on the mid-card there. Who are we talking about this time? Why, Imperium, of course. Yes, as it stands right now, Imperium are arguably the strongest group on WWE TV not named The Bloodline. And this level of success has been a recurring pattern for the Europeans as far back as the Indies, when Austrian Ubermensch Walter and German-born Marcel Bartel were a part of the Ringkampf stable alongside Timothy Thatcher and Crystal Michael Jacoby. So it should come as no surprise then that once the former two joined NXT UK in 2019, they'd continue working together as a unit, one which now included fellow German Alexander Wolf and Italian native Fabian Eichner, and one which would become known as Imperium. But the UK would only be the first of their conquests as it happened, because before long they'd jump over to NXT proper, where Walter was able to introduce American fans to his 870-day reign with the WWE United Kingdom title. 
And as if that weren't enough, while working on the black and gold brand, Martel and Eichner would also go on to become NXT Tag Team Champions on two separate occasions. Unfortunately though, as with all good things, this dominating run had to come to an end eventually, and so when it did, three of the members of Imperium, Walter, Martel, and Eichner, moved up to SmackDown, albeit now under the new names of Gunter, Ludwig Kaiser, and Giovanni Vinci, respectively. And since then, they've managed to make a name for themselves all over again, with Gunther in particular being the longest reigning Intercontinental Champion in years, and the man largely credited with bringing some prestige back to the belt. Where do they go following this? The only limit is the sky, it seems. With there being plenty of rumors that Gunther is going to get moved up to the world title scene soon, and with Kaiser and Vinci being obvious choices for a future tag team title shot, we wouldn't be surprised to see Imperium holding all the gold before 2023 is over and done with. That said, we're sure when they do make this play for main roster domination, one of their chief rivals will have something to say about it because as far as the brawling brutes are concerned, that spot should be theirs and theirs alone. Sure, the name may make them sound like old-timey cartoon characters at first, but don't let that fool you. The trio of Sheamus, Ridge Holland, and Butch are as formidable a force as any other on the SmackDown roster. Hell, when it comes to Sheamus, he's a four-time world champion, as well as both a former King of the Ring and Royal Rumble winner, so there should be no doubt over his credentials. Still though, by the beginning of 2022, it was hard to argue his career didn't feel like it was on a downswing. So it's just as well he started teaming up with former rugby player Ridge Holland at this point as it completely reinvigorated him and made the Irishman feel like an actual threat all over again. And it wouldn't end there because just a few months later, Butch would also be recruited into the group. And yes, we're all well aware of how stupid the Butch gimmick was during those initial weeks and months, but as time went on and Triple H took over control of creative, the former Pete Dunne got to play someone a lot closer to the bruiserweight he'd played on NXT. Thank God this happened then because with the Brawling Brutes now being less of a Peaky Blinders ripoff and more of a modern day incarnation of William Regal and Fit Finley, it's meant that they've been able to have some great matches week in and week out. It doesn't matter if it's in trios action against the likes of the Bloodline and Imperium or in singles bouts such as the five-star classic Sheamus had against Gunther at September 2022's Clash at the Castle, everything they do seems to strike gold now. And with the tenuous addition of an unofficial fourth member in the form of Drew McIntyre in recent months, it means they've only grown that much stronger. Just don't ask too many questions about how Sheamus and McIntyre managed to get away with naming their tag team uh, the Banger Brothers. That one sure slipped past legal for a while, didn't it? To be honest though, we're surprised it was them who came up with it because usually that kind of humor is reserved for our next subject, one of the longest running factions in WWE, and that's the New Day. Yes, for Big E, Kofi Kingston, and Xavier Woods, it's all about having fun. But while comedy and sly pop culture references have always been a big part of their act, that shouldn't suggest they can't handle themselves in a fight when the time calls for it, because since their formation, they've been absolutely dripping with gold. Seriously, not only are they 12-time tag team champions, with these titles usually being contested under the Freebird rule, but two of their members, Kingston and Big E, have also become WWE champion while they've been active. And for Woods, while he may never have reached the top of the mountain in that sense, he has found single success too by becoming King of the Ring in 2021. Of course, part of the reason they've been able to rack up so many accolades has been because, whether it's tag team or singles action, the trio are always there for each other. Hell, even during the early days of the run when they were playing the role of heels, they knew fine well what they had together was special. And eventually fans figured this out too because after a while, the New Day would morph into one of the most beloved acts in WWE history, one which was equally as popular with children as it was with adult males. Why was that? Well, aside from genuinely being funny and entertaining, they all just come across as really nice guys, particularly Big E, who's notorious for being pretty much universally beloved by everyone who knows him. And this has meant fans are only too happy to go with them no matter what silliness they bring, whether it be saving Kofi from Royal Rumble elimination via means of pancakes in 2018, or popping out of a giant box of bootios while dressed in Dragon Ball Z gear at WrestleMania 32. Yes, it just goes to show that there's room for every different flavor of great stable in wrestling, and that not everything has to be as detailed as the Bloodline or as violent as the Blackpool Combat Club.
No, at the end of the day, wrestling is best when there's variety. And through each of the stables we've discussed today, you can see that variety on full display.